Hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX Deep Dive with me, Asav Rijindal. Earlier today, India's first launch of 2026 ended in a setback after the PSLV C-62 rocket veered off course due to a critical third stage mal malfunction. Have a look at that exact moment. All right, so now that you've seen that, uh, according to ISRO Chairman V. Narayanan, the mission encountered a technical anomaly. Listen in to what he said. As all of you are aware, today uh, we attempted PSLV C-62 EOS N1 mission. The PSLV is a four-stage vehicle and the first stage is uh, solid motor with two strap-ons. Second stage is the uh, the liquid stage. Third stage is a, again a solid stage. Fourth stage is a liquid stage. And the performance of the vehicle close to the third stage was as expected and as predicted. And end of, close to the end of the third stage, we were seeing some disturbance in the vehicle. And uh, there was a deviation in the path of the vehicle. And uh, the mission could not proceed in the expected path. That is what is the information right now available. Now we are going, going through the data and we have to get the data from all the ground stations. And once the data analysis is completed, we... The mission began flawlessly with a 10.18 a.m. IST liftoff from Sri Harikota. But eight minutes later, after two successful first two stages and separation, flight computers flagged a performance disturbance in the PS3 segment triggering an immediate mission review by ISRO. While the initial flight stages were nominal, the third stage, PS3, failed to provide the required thrust due to an unexpected drop in chamber pressure. Now, what exactly is chamber pressure, you may ask? It refers to the high gas pressure inside the combustion chamber of a rocket motor where propellant burns. It's one of the most critical performance parameters for any rocket stage. High pressure means more thrust. If chamber pressures fall unexpectedly, the engine doesn't generate enough force. The rocket slows down or deviates from its trajectory. And this is exactly what happened. A significant deviation was observed from the intended flight path. And as a result, the satellites could not be placed in orbit. The PSLV DL equipped with two solid strap-on motors to enhance lift capability was carrying the EOS N1 or Earth Observation Satellite N1 called Av Av Anvesha. Let's tell you more about EOS N1. This is an advanced Earth Observation Satellite developed by the Defence Research and Development Organisation also known as DRDO. It weighs 400 kilograms and was expected to be placed into the sun synchronous orbit for wide area data collection. The satellite is equipped with sophisticated hyperspectral imaging technology allowing it to capture primary colors as well as hundreds of light bands down to each pixel. This can help the Indian government monitor anything from crop health and soil moisture to mineral and environmental mapping, urban expansion and strategic surveillance. The launch was also a part of commercial arm of the Indian Space Programme by New Space India Limited. This mission was carrying 15 satellites belonging to domestic and international firms. These include the Kestrel Initial Technology Demonstrators, a small-scale prototype of a re-entry vehicle developed by a Spanish startup, which was to return to Earth's atmosphere and touch down in the South Pacific Ocean. The MOI-1 satellite from Hyderabad-based startup 
Make Me Two Space and EON Space Labs, the MOI-1 satellite, which is equipped with an orbital AI image laboratory that can process data in space instead of sending everything back to Earth first. This lets users rent processing time like a space cyber cafe, paying as little as around rupees 180 per minute for access to in-space computing. It also features Mira, the world's lightest space telescope, weighing around 502 grams, made in one solid piece of sturdiness. Amongst the 15 satellites, there were five satellites from Brazil, an Earth observation satellite made by the UK and Thailand, and a technology demonstration satellite from Nepal. Perhaps the most impressive was uh, the Ayulsat, which was built by Bengaluru startup Orbit Aid Aerospace, which also was to be a petrol pump in space. The idea was to put all these satellites into a sun synchronous polar orbit. About 17 minutes after the launch, the main satellite and most co passengers were expected to settle in the sun synchronous orbit for optimal Earth views. An SSO is a near polar orbit where a spacecraft passenger passes, I beg your pardon, over any given point on Earth at, w at the same local solar time each day, ensuring consistent sunlight for imaging and remote sensing. You already heard what the ISRO chairman said, but he did not formally announce whether the mission was a success or a failure. The launch of the PSLV C-62 EUS-N1 mission was the 105th launch from Sri Hari Kota. It's also the 64th flight of PSLV and the 5th mission of the PSLV DL variant. It was the 9th mission undertaken by New Space India Limited, which is ISRO's commercial arm. This isn't the first time a PSLV rocket has failed over the past years in May. ISRO similarly failed to launch the EOS-09 satellite aboard the PSLV C-61 after a failure in the third stage of the rocket as there was a fall in the chamber pressure. That mission too sought to place the Earth observation satellite in sun-synchronous polar orbit at an altitude of about 597 kilometers. In fact, the incident brings PSLV success rate down to 94%. Since its debut in 1993, the PSLV has made and has only had a handful of failures at launch, first in 1993 and then in 2017. The development is sure to leave some concerned about the impact on India's private space ecosystem. ISRO has set itself the target of launching over 100 satellites in 2026. It is eyeing the expansion of its NAVIC constellation and future human spaceflight missions and preparing for the Gaganyaan moon mission, which uses LVM-M3. In fact, joining us at this point in time is Dr. Raju Garudachar, former project director, ISRO. Thank you, sir, for joining us on the broadcast, speaking to us on NewsX. And of course, the question on everyone's mind is, uh, what exactly went wrong with the PSLV launch, sir? It's not very clear right now, except that probably third stage thruster has not properly performed. It is premature to say anything officially. We are waiting for, and the ISRO is waiting for a real analysis. And certainly there will be an announcement on what exactly was the malfunctioning unit. So, but up to second stage, completely successful. Third stage, there was some issue. Hmm. And honestly, it is not a real uh, it's not announced yet, and the experts are working on that. We'll wait for it for a few hours, or maybe very soon. And uh, what would have happened if it had successfully done is what is to be discussed now. If you want, we can talk about what are all the things it carried, what are all the payloads, and uh, we can discuss that. Thank you. Right, Anything absolutely. else? Absolutely. I'd also like to understand from you, you know, uh, we also want to understand about this mission at large and uh, also want an understanding from you as to what this stage three anomaly really means as far as the entire mission is concerned. 
I mean, as far as the PS3 is going it should it will certainly the failure does not will not take it to the required orbit in space which is supposed to be going up to 515 kilometers that means you don't have enough thrust enough power to reach it so it may be tumbling or it may be doing some other uh, unwanted uh, maneuvering uh, so it is yet uh, difficult to explain unless we get the full data from the experts so right absolutely uh, uh, you know what is what is perhaps some other information that you can tell us about this launch sir yes what i'm telling you, what it would have been uh, what would have been an excellent mission would have been that it would be the hyperspectral imager developed by the defense organization what is hyperspectral it has got thousands of spectral lines that means it is an example of what we have launched on the moon mission where each spectral line, each spectral line has a signature of a particular element. Maybe you can you can find out the elements on the um, related to you know minerals, atmospheric constituents, and many other earth-related remote sensing elements like soil moisture, vegetation, type of crop. All those things are possible. With this kind of a very powerful hyperspectral means, maybe to have uh, nearly hundreds or nearly thousands of uh, spectral lines, each one referring to a particular property of the element on the Earth. We similarly, we could do many things with respect to presence of various minerals on other galactic uh, objects like such as Moon or Mars, but certainly we could do it for. India in uh, Earth observation of our vegetation, minerals, atmospheric properties, everything related to Earth observation. It's called Earth observation satellite EOS. Now beyond that, there are some other uh, missions, some other uh, missions which are very challenging. For example, the uh, other side, other major important thing is there was a startup, uh, some Bangalore, which was meant for which had, which had, start, which had um, uh, launched an ex experimental mission where you can have on-orbit fueling of the satellite. Suppose the satellite has got life uh, is going away because the propulsion propellant, and this can be like like an aircraft. Some of the aircraft can be used for on-orbit fueling so that the life of the aircraft can be continued. These are all some of the things which are expected, including splashdown on the Earth in the Pacific Ocean. And these are all done by the, not by the great, from the bigger agencies, but many of them are startups. So we are looking for, we were looking for some of these exciting things, which now is partly disappointed as this mission has not yet declared operational or even they have not declared fully failure or whatever the state case we'll know tomorrow or very soon. Thank you. All right, so with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast, speaking to us on NewsX. On that note, a short break.